Oh, you guys are in the warm straw. That's brand new fresh. Yeah, and then you're in the warm sun. Spread it out, Willie. Lucy taught you how to do make nests. Yeah, these two are good. It's actually warm today. Oh, Miss Tilly's making her rounds of the tree stumps. She's always got to sit by the, well, they're not stumps. The tree bases. Apparently the sun's warm there. You wait till you see what I did for your doghouse. I know. Welcome to the channel, guys. We have cold temperatures coming. So I have to make this video. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Did I miss somebody? I believe I did. There's a rooster and a biscuit in the sunbeam with straw all over your mouth. Yeah. All right. So when you got cold coming, and they don't all come in the house, trust me, I'm not gonna have this argument with people. Uh, in the case of Tilly, she will not come inside. I can get her into the patio to eat if it's raining, but she's weary the whole time. And probably the reason for that is, we'll go back here for a second. Tilly started out as a hunting dog, and I'm sure uh, was penned up for the first part of her life with probably many other dogs. So once she got out, she don't want to go back in nowhere. And I have tried to drag her in. You can't do it. The dog doesn't want to be inside. They don't want to be inside. And that's that. Not going to force her. She's never been inside. Not at least at my place. So, you know, the best I can do for her is give her a, the warmest place that I can possibly give. And I'll show you that in a minute. But, uh, you know... There's millions and millions of animals out there, like rabbits and things like that. Once you start bringing dogs in and you keep them in all the time, that weakens them. Okay, then, then if they got stuck outside in the cold, well, they're not equipped to handle it because they're not acclimatized to it. Uh, cattle, all them things, deer, rabbits, bear. Uh, I don't even think bear hibernate here. So anyway, now chickens, you ain't got to do a whole lot for chickens. Just give them, give them a shelter like I have there, out of the wind. Get them some fresh straw in their nesting boxes. And I got to show you something, man. I don't know what's up with waddles. But we're going to take a peek. Uh, he started this about two weeks ago. Oh, I forgot to put the, whoa, I forgot to put the lid back on. Yeah, he's still in there. And there he is. Look, man. Are you guarding all the nesting boxes so they can't get in? You are a rooster. You might walk funny, but you're a rooster. And he will not come out. What's up, young man? You're a rooster. You're not a hen. You are not a hen. And I just drooped again. I got to get my stick tightened up. They want to come in and get a closer look at you because you're silly. You are a rooster, son. You need to come out of there. There's probably eggs in there. Yeah? You looking at yourself? These ladies would like to come in and maybe lay some eggs. You guys got plenty of food. I put you some straw out. But I can't put any in that nest box because your big old butt's in there. Uh, that boy. That boy. But yeah, these guys will be fine in here. They stay up. They stay next to each other. They'll roost. As long as they're out of the wind, they're fine. These are a very hardy breed of bird. Not most chickens are. Just give them a place to get out of the wind. The wind is the worst thing. You know, and then when you get to like 20 degrees, yeah, you need to put a heat. But for adult chickens, you don't need no heat lamps. These chickens, them hens, are in their 14th year. They've never had heat. So, don't listen to everybody. You don't have to have heat for chickens. All right. Now, since Tilly won't come in, 
Well, I've had to do a few modifications. For one, I put a heating pad in there, an outdoor rated heating pad made for dogs. And there is a board there just to block the wind if it comes from that direction. Ah, it may be a little dark here, guys. I have like two pieces of insulation there on the bottom, on the side against the wall. I'll see if you can look in there. Let that focus. There's a heating pad in there. She's already discovered it. I had it on high. And here is the controller. It'll stay on 24 hours if I want it to. I got that plastic over it. Uh, there's two, three layers on top of insulation. Very tight seal. That's what these rocks are doing. This is something put together in a hurry. Because it doesn't get that cold that often here. And all four sides and the ends are covered in double insulation. So I think she'll be pretty comfortable in there. And of course, I'm going to be here to take keep an eye on her. And I peeked in on her last night and it was about 28. She was just sound asleep, wasn't shivering or nothing. So, yeah, looks like a big ice chest. But it also keeps heat in. And as long as you get the floor covered, you're doing pretty well. Plus, we're on about 8 inches of topsoil here. Uh, yeah, it's a goofy place, but she likes to be close to the house. And Tilly also has a heated dog bucket. Dog water bucket. So that will never freeze, no matter how cold it gets. It stays a constant lukewarm, lukewarm temperature for them. So she's set out here. Alright, for whatever reason, the power just went out. As long as that nonsense don't happen while it's cold, we're good. Now, this is the dog's apartment. It isn't the best insulated yet. Hey, boy. Settle down. The power's out. It ain't the best insulated, but I can maintain 50, 55 degrees in here in any temperature. Now, that's not going to be enough. We've got 1 degrees coming, 6 degrees, 7 degrees. That is not going to be enough. So, I will bring the Mr. Heater like I did last year. Put it up here and that will give them even on low that's in the coldest of days that's going to keep them warm in here oh boy yeah and they got their blankets now i can't even bring them any more blankets because this boy will drag them outside because it doesn't have his stinky smell on it well it don't no it don't so these dogs are taken care of and guys they did not they did not have this room until last winter they moved in at the end of last summer, and they spent their first winter in it last year. We got a few real cold nights, but nothing bad. So they're going to be fine. And uh, again, I've got a camera in here for them to keep an eye on them. The colds never bothered them before, but they are getting older, so they're good in here. The only other one that's really got to be outside is Tilly, and you know, Rooster will be in with me. All right, guys. We got why is the power out did you just chew the main power cord boy i wouldn't put it past you i wouldn't all right in the cabin all i have run up until this point and we've had some 15 degree nights 20 degree nights so i think it was 22 last night that electric fireplace is all that's all that's provided the heat in here i do got that big boy and we will be firing that up uh i believe sunday Sunday through like Wednesday is going to be nasty. I mean, the highs are only going to be in the teens. So I've got that. I've got my tanks full. I went and filled them up. And I've got that one right there ready. But I noticed last year I did not cover this with anything. And that gasket right there is all cracked. So I'm not even going to attempt to hook it up. So tomorrow morning... I'm going to go get a new gasket. You don't want any kind of cracks in it. So the sun baked that. Uh, the line looks fine. Yeah, I just hung it up right there. And the sun dried it out. So no big deal. That's a 10 cent part. I may just go ahead and replace the whole attachment. Because that's probably 8, 9 years old. So it probably don't hurt. Well, here's a top view of her. Igloo house. It's really a an igloo house now so me and rooster's good in here and i do have another electric heater uh like you saw in the dog apartment i do have a spare one of them i'll probably be running that in the, in the bathroom we'll be going through a lot of power the next few days 
But we're fine. All you got to be is prepared. That's it. But the animals will be fine. You guys know. I watch them. Man, I, I will not let any of my dogs suffer. She's going to be really warm in there with that electric heat pad. I put my hand on that last night. And it was, it wouldn't burn you or nothing, but it was warm. But, and she had a layer of straw. Now, straw is an insulator as well. Uh, it's better than hay. Straw is hollow. So anything that's hollow is, a, and it'll, if it gets wet, it'll drain, it'll dry out a lot quicker. So, man. All right, my next thing. This shower has been the biggest headache. It still leaks. I have been taking silicone and wrapping around all of that. And I still get a drop there and a drop there. Not a lot, but I can't close this wall up like that. So I'm going to replace that. I believe the brass is cracked. It's a cheap Chinese made uh, fixture. I think I paid 110 bucks for the whole thing. Now I can leave this and just buy that part. You can see I actually I forgot to one of the times I put it together I forgot to put that back on. That works great and it's it works great. But I can't find where there's no way that leaks there. I've got Teflon tape, I've got pipe thread. So the house yeah, I just felt it. It's right there in the housing. Yeah. When's America going to start making our own stuff again? This is getting crazy. Now I got to go buy a new. I hope I can just buy this part. That's all I need. I'll get on Amazon, see what I can find. But I'm going to try to find one that's made in America if that's even possible. Doubt it. And the power come back on. I know that because, well, those rope lights come on. They don't. They were off, but when the power comes back on, they go off. I gotta go turn the dog's light back on because that goes off the same way. And pull your music came back on. Your heater. We don't need to we don't need to let's give your heater a rest, Tilly. We'll put their light back on. And you just sitting here and listen to a little Garth Brooksy. Little Garth Brooksy. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta get out of here before I get a copyright. Because you're singing too loud. <laughs> Oh, those dogs. They're silly. Down here amongst all this other mess is the new uh, dog food container. Airtight. I'm going to get another one so I can always have two on, on board for them. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Doesn't take up much room as a toast stick. Well, goodness sake, how's it go on there? I seen that when I was taking care of the puppies at uh, uh, Ivy's Family Factotum. They had one that was smaller. I think it was smaller. And I'm like, man, that's pretty cool. So I got on Amazon. And there it is. Pretty cool. And don't look at my messy house. I've been busy, guys. <laughs> Looks like there's a little bit more food, don't there? Yeah, look at this. We have been... They just look at me in the grocery store when I come in. So I got 85 cans. Been getting these filled up. Now, what I've got inside of these are oxygen. Um, they remove the oxygen. I don't know what you call them. Oxygen removers. I'll show you the box. Oxygen absorber. You just open one up, put it in there, and they absorb any oxygen in there. Uh, you got any bugs or anything? Well, nothing on Earth survives without oxygen, so it kills them. And then them bugs become protein. Yeah. And so just, you know, I'm not going to go overboard. I would say right here, probably I, I can make this last a year. Maybe, maybe eight months to a year. Just on what I got there. And, uh, you know, these are really good to have because you eat, you know, it gets bad. You eat one can of these a day, you're good. You're going to lose weight, but you'll, you'll survive. Not maybe the healthiest thing, things to eat but yeah we got split peas we got lima beans lentils 16 bean soup i really like that so i'm stocking up on that you know it doesn't take much to make a big pot of food same with spaghetti you know you can get out of one of these packs you can get about three days worth of food maybe four so 
that's good to stack I, or stock. I just left these in the packages, put one of the oxygen absorbers in there. This was the stuff in the cardboard box. I inspected it all. It looked, there were no bugs that I could see. So I'm, the bugs are going to be the least of my worries. And bugs don't like cedar, and I got a lot of cedar in here. So I'm also going to try to build up my chicken broth and beef broth supplies. Uh, so handy there. You want to make rice, you need a flavor. Hey, you can make soup. You can water it down a little bit so it ain't as strong. You know, it'll go a little further. Same with tomato paste. You can make tomato sauce out of tomato paste. I hardly ever buy tomato sauce. I buy crushed tomatoes to make my chili uh, spaghetti sauce. It's just thicker, tastes better. I don't know. It's not as watery. I don't like watery sauce, so... Well, there you go guys just a short video uh, so you know i'm taking care of my dogs i always do uh, i'll drag her butt in here if it gets that cold but with, with that heating pad that insulation she's not gonna be cold trust me and i have another thing at my disposal a heat lamp so if it gets that cold where those things aren't working a heat lamp and you, when you look at a dog and they're shivering that is what they do to stay warm Okay, now she wasn't shivering last night, so I know it was warm in there. And, you know, it got down to 22, which is pretty cold. But with the combination of the heat pad, the straw, that heat's holding in there. I didn't have the styrofoam on there. I just put did that this morning. I didn't film it, but you've seen that. There's no way that can't keep her warm, and I think that's more than enough. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll let you know. And for those of you in campers and things... Get busy today. You got today and tomorrow. Because after that, uh, the, the cold's coming. You ain't going to want to be out there working on stuff. So protect your water, protect your animals, and protect yourself. Happy trails. Y'all in there.